Whoa. What's up guys? So this is part two of my tutorial for how I make daily vlogs. So once again, if some of you viewers are totally interested in making videos, uh, especially with Final Cut Pro X, you can just skip this one and I will be back with another video, maybe tomorrow or another day. But if you for some reason are interested, stick around and you might just learn something. And hopefully I will learn something. So this is part two. Part one was about recording video and planning. So in this tutorial, we can call it a tutorial, I will show you all the steps from import from the memory card to when I publish the video on YouTube. So also please watch part one because you will need it for planning so that you make sure that you have time for editing. This is very important in the long run if you're doing daily videos. I will go through this at a rather fast pace. So if you miss something or don't understand, just pause and go back and check it again. And if you still don't understand, put a comment down below and I will try to explain what I do. Also, I will use a lot of shortcuts and maybe I don't always mention what I press, but it should be showing on the screen with the screen recording software that I'm using. Okay, so here's the deal. I am a one man show. There's like no movie crew or anything helping me when I'm doing my videos. I'm also a father, I'm a husband, I have two kids, I work a full-time job. I do not have much time over the days I do my vlogs or videos. Saving time is everything to me. So therefore I developed the fastest way possible to produce my videos. Uh, so I have time over for other things, like being a parent or a husband. So if you see room for major improvement after watching this video, please let me know in the comments. This question always comes up, of course it does, and it's about gear. So I will go through all the gear that I use for editing, hardware and software. So for hardware, I have a MacBook Pro from 2012, which I installed 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I have an i5 processor. Uh, I have a SSD hard drive at, from Intel with 256 gigabytes. I put all my footage on an external uh, USB 3 drive on two terabytes. It's a Seagate. Uh, the camera equipment I use, you can find in the description down below. I use headphones when I edit. If I am around the kids, I use regular iPhone uh, headphones. But also if I'm disturbed by the kids, I use noise cancelling headphones from Bose, the CQ5. They are really good. Also on airplanes or in cars, then you can edit anywhere and always hear the sound. So for software, I only use Final Cut Pro X and uh, pretty much because that was the first program I learned to edit in and I'm still using it. And also I use Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So all these programs will be used in this tutorial. The settings I use for Final Cut Pro is uh, I set the project settings for 1080p I do not go 4K. I think 4K pretty much kills my computer. I shoot 30 frames per second at 1080p. And also I make sure that background render in Final Cut Pro settings is set to off. Because I cannot sit around and wait for Final Cut to render my video. Also I always store the files from the memory cards on my external drive outside the Final Cut Pro library because the Final Cut Pro library can so easily be corrupted or mess up something and then you can't access your footage later if you need it for some reason. Okay, so the project I now will edit for you has already been completed a few days ago. You can watch the video right here. It was one of my vlogs. It was pretty long, 40 minutes. I, got, I had like 45 minutes to an hour of footage. So it was a ton of footage five different cameras, uh, very complex and took a lot of time to finish. So let's get into the screen recording software and I'll show you the actual edit. I have like some cheap screen recording software, so it's not 1080p format, it could be like, like this, but the, as soon as you get the idea what I'm doing, uh, I'll be happy. So. so first we need to import our footage. I'm using an external drive with the NTSF format that works with Windows. And then I used the application Paragorn, which I bought, that makes uh, NTSF format work on a MacBook. But you can pretty much use, use any external disk you like. 
So I always put all the material in an external hard drive. I create a folder for this year, this month and the current day. And to speed this up, I will use some shortcuts. You can see them here. New folder with today's date. And also you can put a name for what it's about. Then I usually create a folder for every camera device that I have used. I had the DJI drone. I had a Canon 80D. I had the GoPro. And some shots with the iPhone. Also I create the import folder for music or other videos or pictures that I would like to use. I open up the first SD card which is from the Canon camera. I copy all, all of the files and put them in the ADD folder. And then I repeat this process for all the rest of the memory cards. Importing all your files takes a lot of time. So it's important to do this early on before you start editing to save some time. Also, importing them to Final Cut Pro X takes a lot of time if you are converting them to proxy media. So if you have a pressed time schedule, I suggest you import and convert uh, sometimes in the middle of the day and then do it in the evening. This way you can get faster in the process and start editing. Importing from your iPhone is a bit more tricky. You will have to open the image capture application. It shows the video files you want to import from the day. You also need to decide where to put these ones. It shows other below. Go to your external hard drive and import. Now all files from every single camera is imported and you can see how much footage you got. This day was a pretty long day, so the footage is about 14 gigabytes. Make sure that you don't have any memory card mounted before launching Final Cut. Usually it doesn't matter, but I don't want to confuse Final Cut too much because I think it has a lot of bugs in it. Launch Final Cut. Once in Final Cut Pro X, it's time to create a new event and import all the files. I'm not entirely sure how to create a project library on an external drive but I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. This project is on my external hard drive. I would press option N to create a new event. I usually use today's date and the name for the project. The same one that I used in this folder right here. My workflow is always 1080p for the vlogs and if I do a separate video, I might do them in 4K. But settings for the project 1080p, 30 frames per second, which you should have all your cameras set to, or more. Change the project name. What I do now is that I will create smart collections, which will have the same name as all the cameras, so I, that I easily can go through all the footage. Press Shift Command K and I do DJI, ADD, GoPro, iPhone, and import. I go to ADD and I press Import Media. I choose the ADD folder and I make sure I have leave files in place and create proxy media chosen. My computer is very old, so proxy media makes me edit faster, although the footage could be heavy. Choose import selected. Once you've done this one time, then you can drag and drop the files and the same settings sh should be working. So I choose DJI folder. I drag and drop all the files. And then the GoPro files. And this I do for all the, all the different cameras. So here is the thing that would take a lot of time. Right now Final Cut is processing all the files. I press Command 9 and I will see the window with all the files being converted to proxy media. When you get to this part, you pretty much want to make sure that your computer does not kill itself. It has power. And then you go grab a coffee. One thing that you can do 
is take all your memory cards and put them back in your devices. There is nothing that sucks so hard as coming out to the place you want to shoot your video and not having a memory card in your camera. Always remember to put the memory cards back in your camera. Alright, so I just had some dinner. It was really nice. So this is pretty much the way you have to go about it. You have to be flexible. Uh, I'm a family man, so most of the time I sit with my computer out around the kids so I can help and do my edits. Multitasking. Now what you want to do is open up the project you just created earlier and pretty much build your timeline as the story for the day will be presented. Usually my main rig is the Canon, so I drag in all the footage and also I make sure that I'm set for proxy media. Proxy media right here and not optimized original. So here we have the timeline of the project. And you want to check how much you got. I have like 30 minutes and that does not even include all the GoPro or drone footage. Then you go through all the footages, the drone footage, a GoPro, whatever device is used, and build the story, the basic story of the timeline. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I pretty much drag and drop all the drone footage here in, at the beginning. And then I roughly go through it and see what part I think I can use. I don't want to be using any parts when I don't have smooth smooth motions. So I pretty much just go it over like this and pick away the parts that that I don't like. Right, so now roughly we have put our timeline together. All clips is where I want them. And we have about 43 minutes of footage, which is quite a lot. Because uh, I aim for getting it down to maybe 8 to 10 minutes. What I also did here was that I put together some multicam clips. If you don't know what multicam is, it is pretty much that you use two silver, two different cameras in the same scene, usually starting with uh, some sound recognition to sync them. I always sync them manually, I never use audio for synchronization. What you can do here, you can bring up the scoops when doing multicam editing. You bring up this video scope and you can see what's happening on both the scenes. You press play and then you just press these separate windows and decide which one you want to see. Also you can press 1 on the keyboard or 2 uh, like this. 1, 2 and decide if you want uh, uh, only video to be edited or both when switching between your cameras. Very good thing to know and a really nice technique while making videos overall. Now we have our storyline in place and it's time to start the real editing. Shrinking this from 43 minutes something down to 8 minutes. And depending on what you're going for, you might want to need something that's very important and it's music. So where do I get my music? Well, I have three primary sources for music. Uh, the easiest one is the YouTube free audio library. Uh, you just open it and then you can look around on moods, instruments, lengths, genre, genre, I'm not sure the word in English, uh, and so on. And uh, go for the one you want, just press download. You can sort by popularity here. Really nice. Uh, work. It will get you very, very far. You don't have to worry about copyright issues. You can also go for SoundCloud. And here you can search for music, type in house, then you go for tracks and to listen to, to use commercially. If you are uncertain if these, uh, if you are uncertain if this uh, song is really non-copyright because it sucks to get a copyright strike, you can always search in the YouTube I uh, audio library here for music like Metallica and you will find out that most songs by Metallica are copyrighted by different uh, copyright owners like this. If you don't want to be using those, make sure they are non-copyrighted and that you have the permissions from the creator to use their work. If you like to have no problems whatsoever, you can always pay 10 to $15 a month and go for Epidemic Sound. Uh, 
this is where I get my music like 95% of the time. You have moods, movement, here you can search for music, you can create playlists with the music you have used and so on. Right, so we have our imported song here in the import folder and uh, it's time to start building your vlog or video or whatever it is. So pretty much drag and drop it and uh, start editing. Since I do this almost every day, time is of the essence and I really love saving time. So I use as many shortcuts as possible. They will be shown on your screen, hopefully. But zoom in and zoom out is uh, this one, command and these two buttons right here. So what I do pretty much when I edit is that I uh, use these keys, L for going forward. K for stopping, J for going back, and if you want to go faster, you just press, press L a few more times. K to stop. And then I try to edit through the music, so you pretty much go like this. Space. And there I want to edit, Command B. And I pro throw in like another clip here. I stop, command B, I press I and delete. And that's how I, ro I roll with every clip I make. I press command B, I delete to get the part that I want. So I'm gonna build my story here with the music and uh, trim it to the best I can. And then we will move on with uh, extras like uh, intro with text or something like that. Also what I like to do to the very first clip I use is press Control V and make a fade in like this. Just to get a good start of it. So we have opener here and also a good tip that you can use is to these clips which I'm not sure what I will use for. You can mark them all. You can press V to inactivate them and just put them up here for a while. So you can use them later on. Here I have a few clips which and I do not intend to use audio. So here comes another tip. Instead of doing like this, turning off audio for every single one, you can copy the attributes from the first file to the rest of the files. So what you do is that you remove audio from this one, you press command C to copy, then you mark these two here. And press shift command V and you use audio attributes and paste. There you go, audio is gone for a lot of files. Moving on with edit. Now I have been editing for like maybe an hour. There was a lot more footage than I was hoping for. You can see we are well over 30 minutes here and uh, I just thought of a tip here I can give to you. If you're trying to, uh, to make the video follow the music, so you want the uh, this movement with the drone to go a bit faster and then slow down again following the music you can do like this so first you start and follow the music bam you cut it you mark this one and then you look for the next place where the music shifts from the beginning first second and you mark it so this is where you want this fast spin to stop. So you go over to here somewhere and you control delete it and mark this one and press control option R and go for like 500%. And you see you almost got it, 600, 650. There you have it, let's look at it. Bam, cut it, I delete. So that's one way of uh, making uh, videos follow music when you're fast forwarding and so on. Use the marker with M a lot. Story is done. We ended up with 14 minutes instead of 8 because I decided to go for a bit more of the story than I was planning to. I did some changes. Uh, during the edit I found the theme for the day which was Dad gets taken out in the snowball fight. So put that one in the beginning, so that when you click the video, you get to see what's coming. Here's here. Let's try it again. Because my kid actually hit me straight in the face with a really nice throw. I'm impressed. Here's here. Let's try it again. 
that little bastard. So now we're going to add text in the beginning and uh, do an end screen because if you have about 100 subscribers you can uh, do a YouTube end screen. And when we're done with that we're going to color grade this entire footage which will take a lot of time. Let's start with the end screen. I usually go to my previous project. So here on my previous project I just copy this one and then go back to my new project put the marker here, zoom in a bit so I know what I'm doing so I probably just put it somewhere here command 4 the next number of the blog 79 Let's do the same with the end screen. I'll put it there. Remove the old audio. Remove. No, could I remove that one? Yes, I could. Put the video here because I think I will end with the aerial, aerial video like this. So this will be filled later on with uh, the symbol for the channel here and the previous vlog right here with a nice background. <laughs> All right, so. Time for the most painful part of video making, if you are not very fast or know what you're doing, but oh, I can't see the amounts of clips, but we have a ton of clips here, and we're going to color grade them. So I figured I'd just show you how I color grade. When you have a small screen like this, this is a 13 inch, so what I do is that I remove the libraries here, in the window, there you go. And I press command 6 and 7 and take out this one. I'm not a professional in any way. I have my way of color grading and I think it looks okay, so I stick to it. I make one correction, not more than one. First, I adjust exposure levels like this. I use the arrows up and down after you marked it. I pretty much look at this and this, what I get. You don't want to crush it and go under. The bright spots I put up if I think it's necessary, but this is one. This one is already bright. I add some saturation, and I think that oh, that's kind of it. Sometimes I pull this one down a bit, the mids, to get the more cinematic looks, but not this time. And this I do for every yeah. single clip. To save time, you can copy the attributes of one clip. I will show you in this uh, drone video here. First you go for exposure, pull that one up a bit, maybe like this one. So I am crushing the brights here, I'm aware, but I don't really care because I'm going for the look of it. Putting this up, maybe on color you can bring this if you want the red look to it. This one is another, this one is another. Here we have, uh, this one looks the same as this one. So I'm going to mark it, press copy. And then press Shift Command V as I did before, but this time we go for Video Attributes. I press Space there. It's if it's a blank uh, field on the screen, it's space. And then enter just to paste. So there I go with the color grade. You can see the difference. It really makes it look really cool, almost too cool. And this I keep doing for every video that I have. I copy paste the video attributes all the way through here until I'm done and the only one that are a bit special is the, the multicam clips because when you have like this symbol right here the multicam you open it you can actually go in here and mark the clip that you want to use and just color grade the entire scene if possible and then choose the other one and color grade that one instead of color grading every single one of these cuts here, here in the multicam clip. So I will do this now and it will be over in a heartbeat because I'm not going to show you all of it, but you've seen the principle for it. I'll just show you a bit of it. This is what it looks like when I'm not talking, just working. So 
that's my workflow you want to know all the shortcuts it goes much faster also just a little heads up here if you are color grading multiple clips this is very important that you notice this or your edit will be screwed so here I have some color grading attributes for a GoPro clip that I would like to apply to these ones right here so I do copy this one I mark these ones I press as usual shift command V and I press space and watch what happens this one pops up retiming you do absolutely never want retiming because if you have retiming look what happens with my edit down here boom everything drifts off everything gets destroyed make sure retiming is not set usually it doesn't pop up that option but sometimes it does I'm not sure why that is a wrap I now color graded the entire footage and it took me about 15 minutes this means that this entire video is now complete but before we export it we are going to export the thumbnail photo for the YouTube channel. I'm just going to take that very frame where it hits me in the face with the snow if it looks good. So I'm thinking about this frame right here could be a good one. First of all you want to change to optimized original video so you get a high quality picture. And then I want to click here again choose this here and save current frame next is going to be a tf image about 25 megabyte size i have all my thumbnail photos in a folder you just save that one in whatever folder you like go through the entire video in fast forward and uh, review it and this i would do today as well so i don't export it and then find any problems okay so i've just reviewed the footage looks good made some small adjustments some tweaks uh, making sure that we are in optimized original pressing command e for export settings usually i don't bother but make sure that 1080p if that's what you're looking for next so i usually save all the vlogs on external hard drive so 79 and save press command 9 and there you have the sharing process now it's time to work on that thumbnail photo for youtube Adobe Lightroom press D for develop so in Lightroom I pretty much just tweak it a bit to the look that I want that's okay you go back to the gallery and then you open it in Photoshop and I will add some text or arrows or something in Photoshop I pretty much add the text here taken out I'm just gonna mark it go here and change the size a bit of it uh, color I don't know red looks cool uh, then just change the blending options for the layer make some stroke not as much maybe like that I think that's pretty cool I just move it around a bit extra one like this and call that one something like that maybe just quit Photoshop and press save send it back to Lightroom then I export it from Lightroom. File size maximum of 2000 Ks, 2 megabytes size. I have this folder here, preset, and press export. There you go. You have a thumbnail photo, and you are waiting for the sharing to be complete. So let us let's wait it out. Export from Final Cut is finally complete. It took about 40 minutes. It was kind of heavy. So upload is on its way to YouTube and when that is done we're going to do the end screen and um, that's pretty much it but for now I just upload my thumbnail photo if you have everything right the photo needs to be 1920 1080 and not above 2 megabytes so there we go add some tags do some adjustments uh, go through the settings make sure that you upload it as unlisted and uh, then when you are done and everything has rendered out to the full resolution you just go for publish that you can do like tomorrow if you like to so the upload is now complete and it's time to fix the final stuff here go in and uh, like you're going to watch the video and press this button here end screen and cards i think it is now just press this one, use the model 
not sure for the English word. Okay. And then <coughs> you just want to drag these ones. Yeah, maybe it was on the right place. No, here where the text pops up. Yeah, that's the final one right there. Just move this one around a bit like that. Make this one a little bigger. Uh, shows a video. This one. And save. I might just in this case make this one a little smaller so that you can see some of the beautiful landscape. Yeah, there we go. Save. Then when you want to publish, just change it from unlisted to public and save. And that's it. Alright, so that's how I do my videos. So if you have any questions, put them down below. Uh, we can gather up a bunch of questions and make another video where I can explain what I do. And uh, please, if you work a lot in Final Cut Pro X and you know something that could help me out to do this even faster, I am open for improvement. Please let me know. So if you like the channel, hit the bottom right here or check out some of the videos. And I will see you around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm.